Let it never be said that in the age of Barack Obama, public protest has no impact, having initially excluded all advocates for single-payer national health care from the White House Summit on Health Care Reform. After protests from activists, the Obama administration reconsidered and invited Representative John Conyers, author of H.R. 676, the single-payer bill now pending in Congress. They also invited a representative of Physicians for a National Health Program. To bring us up to speed on this victory of sorts, we welcome the founder founder and national coordinator of Physicians for a National Health Program, Dr. Quentin Young. Dr. Young has served as a leader in the fight for guaranteed health care and social justice for over 60 years. He was one of the personal physicians for Dr. King, as well as Studs Terkel, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and yes, the Obamas. Dr. Young is joining us now from Chicago, where he's going to be honored at a gala this weekend, celebrating his 85th birthday. The event honors a rebel without a pause. So welcome to Grit TV, Rebel. Glad to have you, Dr. Young. Thank you for that extravagant introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really quite a victory. Yesterday we hosted a panel of people saying, where are the single-payer uh, advocates at this summit? And today we've heard that at least a couple will be there. Exactly. It is a victory, and we need it very much. Uh, Obama's election brought great hope to many people. There's no denying it. And his skillful oratory uh, you know, has kept the country behind him. But at the same time, his centrist impulses, including health care, are worrisome. Uh, we know uh, that uh, some six, seven years back and uh, thereafter, on numerous occasions, he said, I'm for single payer. It's the best way to go. Mm -hmm. And as his fortunes rose, he sort of qualified it. And what we heard at the end of the campaign and now is a, a messy uh, a bunch of proposals of incremental nature that won't work. You know, our, our support for single payer is not idealistic or or ideal. Or it's simply that the we've tried the others. Most recently in Massachusetts, which they're trying to to give to the American people as a model, and it's it's already imploding. As have the other six states that tried modifications of. Uh, incrementalism, and, and they've all gone south. Mm. Now, you told me when we first met that you were a recovering incrementalist on this issue. What do you mean? Uh, it's a good memory. I mean just that, the temptation to, call it, to, to make compromise, particularly with the powerful insurance companies and the big pharmaceutical agencies that have so much influence in Congress, you would, well, if we can get a little progress, wouldn't that be good? And the answer is no. Starting with the Clinton debacle in 93, we've had every ever recurrent failures. And there's a lot, lot worse with failures than just you didn't do anything. It undermines the public's confidence in the, in the ability of this nation to solve big problems. And that's what Mr. Obama, I think, understands. And we, we think that we took an important but small step in the right direction when he got the message that he really has to have this proposal on the table in the meeting that's going on t uh, today. So you think in that there's an inner Obama who understands this? I'm hearing the word private health care used almost exclusively in discussion of his plan. Well, of course, because his plan is a cave in to the, these elements. And the, the, the private insurance company can't solve the problem. They are the problem. And the good news and the reason I think we won this victory was that the American public got it. They, they have a, a hateful, bitter, bankrupting uh, relationship to the, to the big, in, big uh, private insurance companies and, and, and then must be called to their uh, putting, putting billions in their treasury while the American people have less uh, and less health care. It's a real crisis. So you and sound he, confident to me that it's not just window dressing to have Conyers and one of the other single payer reps there. Well, I, I certainly feel that way, and they'll be eloquent spokesmen for the uh, for the issue. However, we shouldn't have any illusion that it's a battle completely won. We have to let the the will of the people get to Mr. Obama. He he proclaims, and I'm going to continue to believe him that he wants to hear from mm. the public. He'll hear plenty. It's a very exciting new stage in the whole fight that a majority of America's doctors, my profession, a very conservative profession to be sure, 59% polled in last year uh, said they want government-run 
tax-based mm. health insurance. They, what I can summarize is the American doctor learned there's something worse than government. <laughs> Finally, it, um, it, Quentin, it, it, and I can't it, wait you to, to have you in the studio when we can talk at more depth, at more length, but um, talk a little bit about the parallels that you see between the movement for guaranteed health care and the movement for civil rights. Very good. I had the privilege of being part of both. Uh, and uh, my being Dr. King's doctor was when, only when he came to Chicago. He had other doctors in his other venues. But the, 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 the very important parallels, if you think back or at least read back about the middle of the last century, the 1950s, you had legalized segregation in all the southern states and de facto segregation everywhere else. The Congress was in the clutch of, of powerful uh, segregationists senators and and representatives, and the idea of getting out of that post-Civil War morass were very far-fetched. Mm. He, he, to suggest there'd be any amelioration, even anti-lynch laws couldn't be passed in the Congress. That was the status in the mid-50s. So of if the we last could century. make that big a change in civil rights, maybe we can do it in health care, too, but it may Precisely. take a while. Ten Quentin Young, later. thank you so much. I'm sorry, we're out of time. I'm eager to have you in the studio. Come to New York. Dr. Quentin Young is being celebrated this weekend in Chicago. The Rebel Without a Pause is marking his 85th birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very, very, very much. Talk to you again soon.